Hi everyone, Chris Petrie here. Welcome back. We are going to do some flowers today with a little bit of fruit and um, it's going to be colorful and interesting. Um, we're going to contour draw first off. So um, if you uh, want to get a refresher course on contour drawing you can um, just type into YouTube uh, Chris Petrie contour drawing and you'll see that I, I did a couple videos on contour drawing just so you have a little more of a understanding of it if you haven't uh, uh, brushed up on that at all uh, recently at all but in any case uh, we're going to contour draw uh, some a vase of flowers I'm working from a photograph and um, some fruit on a table uh, I've done this type of uh, subject matter you know here and there over the last couple years um, so this is something that you know if you've been following me you kind of have seen me do this before but I figured I would do it again and then I would just maybe focus on something different this time as far as the details of what I'm doing so this time we're going to focus on the, uh, the the color the rich color you get from uh, moist uh, paint so I have my palette here next to me and you can see there's all fresh paint in here it's all moist and, and uh, fresh squeezed right out of the tube and I'm gonna just spritz it a little bit I have it sitting on my table uh, normally I will um, keep my palette in my hand as I work I find that's much more comfortable for me but occasionally when we're doing videos here you know I'll I usually tend to put, put it on and like set it down on the uh, art table here um, it's maybe a little bit easier to um, kind of so you can see what I'm doing as far as the paints and the mixing. So here we'll start off with a contour drawing. We'll draw some flowers, a vase, maybe like a teapot, and maybe a couple pieces of fruit or vegetables or something on the foreground. Uh, and we'll make a little table. And then we'll get into the um, colorful flowers and the colorful you know fruit and the subject matter that we're going to do. And we'll see how using very moist freshly squeezed two paint is really going to be a huge advantage uh, in creating a beautiful painting of this type, flowers, and uh, we'll try to avoid the, the look of maybe um, that faded look where there's just more or less very light washes. So if you can imagine, we're going to tackle this pretty much, um, we're going to do this in, we're going to do this in a la prima fashion. So we're not really going to use the glazing technique, although you could use the glazing te technique in this type of painting if you like. So I think I've tried to on my channel. Um, I hope hopefully everyone can kind of get a feel for both a la prima painting and glazing painting. Because the glazing technique, you can use that in certain situations or anytime you like really. Or you can use the a la prima uh, technique of painting in watercolor anytime you choose as well so you're the artist you decide when you're going to use what techniques but if you practice both techniques separately then you have a better chance of being able to kind of like incorporate both together at times or maybe rely on one more than the other at times so it's good to practice both techniques I think as a watercolor artist and it actually will help you a lot in your painting techniques overall just as a um, as a um, technique in general. So if your overall technique is you understand a la prima painting as well as glazing techniques in paint, watercolor painting, you'll have a much easier time watercolor painting in general whenever you're going to tackle a painting or a sketch or whatever you're doing. So let's get right into it here. I'm just going to go quickly. We'll do a nice contour drawing. I'm working from a photograph. It's just a nice um, some nice flowers so you'll see me here I think you'll be able to see the um, the nice uh, flower shapes here we're doing and these are roses in this uh, floral arrangement here and we're going to go right around and I'm contour drawing so that means I'm just I'm keeping my focus on the the um, photograph or the, the actual um, subject matter in front of me so I just keep going here as I 
work through the teapot here so then we're gonna have an apple here So that, that we now we have our contour drawing pretty much solid. We did our uh, flowers. We maybe have to get our vase vase shape here, our vase. So let's do that. And we have that over here. So it's a nice uh, round vase here. And our our flowers, roses. And let's do another rose up here. And then on our table we'll maybe do some, we'll have some stripes on our uh, tablecloth here, so we'll do some striped tablecloth. Okay, that, that looks good. Um, hopefully you can see the um, the drawing okay, the pencil drawing. Again, I did this in um, light pencil, so I didn't go too dark with the pencil lines. I kind of kept it. And now I'm just doing a little bit of pencil marks to note that I need to make some interesting um, uh, painting on the teapot here and then a little more up here and maybe the teapot top has a little bit of color on that alright so now again the main idea here is um, we're going to use fresh squeezed paint fresh water fresh clean water Change your water bucket um, a couple times if you do a painting this size, maybe like a 6 by 8 inch uh, painting. Keeps the watercolor uh, colors fresh. And I'm using smaller brushes, so I'm just going to use like a, a 4 and a, uh, like a 6 and an 8, or a 4 and an 8. Kalinsky Sable um, brushes, Charles Reed uh, travel brushes. If you, if you were to pick up like if you want to get the best brushes possible for like what we do here on our channel, um, basically you would want to get the Charles Reed Travel Series brushes. That's the best brushes you can use. I mean, they're a little they're 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 not outrageously expensive, but they are an investment. But they're well worth the investment because they just handle the watercolor paint beautifully, and also too an Alvaro Castanet uh, needlepoint brush, and this is an incredible brush here. This will give you beautiful fine lines and it holds lots of paint and liquid in that um, brush area up here, the belly of the brush, so that when you go to do your fine calligraphy in your painting you're going to have lots of paint and you can do a lot at one time. I know I've seen, well I've used some of those other brushes, the rigger brushes and so forth, where they have not much hairs up in the top area of the, of the um, this section of the brush so you almost have to keep going back and forth back and forth to get your lines as you're going through your painting this is much better you load this up with lots of water and paint and you can do tons of nice fine lines in your watercolor paintings with this uh, with this brush the Alvaro Castanet needlepoint brush so these are the two best I think 
uh, the uh, Charles Reed travel set and the Alvaro Castagnette needlepoint brush and if you want to use really large washes if you're using really large paintings you can go with Alvaro's larger um, brushes too he's got the large mop brushes so let's uh, get right into it here Alizarin Crimson and we're gonna have some uh, this is Opera Rose it's even a little bit lighter than the, the Lizard and Crimson, so let's use those two. And let's just get right into it. Do a couple splashes to loosen up so that you're not so nervous on your first couple of brush uh, strokes here on the painting. Leave some whites here and there, whites of paper. Uh, you're going to see I'll use maybe a tissue to dry off the brush a little. So now I want to do a little more darker tonal values here. So I'm going to dry off my brush a little and then go in and get a little darker paint. And you can see that on the palette. Less water, more paint over here to the right. And then right there you can get some more variation in your, your painting, in your, your wash there. That'll be more exciting. If you can do more variety, it's going to look better versus trying to just put on one wash and let it go. Then you're just going to have that one even look. It's better we take a little bit of darker paint. And we have more excitement there. There we go. All right, and let's go in we'll do another flower let's do another uh, this one let's go with a little more paint less water opera rose and alizarin crimson maybe a little bit of um, some mineral violet which is purple let's try to aim our brush correctly so if you, you want to get a pointy narrow section done on the bottom of your flower then you're going to spin your brush around keep your hand at the, on the paper at all times but not but not in the paint so when you paint small it's a little bit easier you can kind of put your hand up on the table high and then let the paint do the work Okay, and you can see here we've got really beautiful color, lots of rich color. Um, and then let's change it up. Let's do some lighter. Again, here we're looking for we're looking for a lot of um, variety with our with our painting here. So, if we were just to make everything the same, that would be a little bit more uh, static and boring. If we try to change up here, we're going with lighter tonal values. Then we go in and get a little darker here and there, like that. A couple little touches of paint. We make some petal shapes. Okay, let's go in and get some orange. So we're going to change up with some orange and red for and a little bit of and a little bit of cadmium yellow. Again, I'm using straight paint right out of the tube. Not much water whatsoever. I dry off dry off my brush a little bit. And then I can smooth out some paint. All right. Okay, let's not forget about our greens. So let's go with some olive green. A little bit of uh, French ultramarine. Olive green. We can do a little greenery in our...
in the center of our bouquet where there's probably some some greenery in there. Let's make that a strong dark. And no need to be too fussy and concerned here with the greens because it's sort of like a negative shape painting here. We're kind of going to paint around the the other flower here you can see. This flower here, we're painting around it with the green. And we can go with a little interesting change in color there. A little splash. And let's go back in and we'll go back in with our opera rose. And then we'll leave a space there. We don't want to touch that green or it's going to uh, flow into the the pink uh, opera rose color here for this rose. So let's kind of we're going to keep do some sh flower shapes with our brush. Top of the flower is round with some petals. Just let your brush flow with the shapes that you see. And here we have another orange and Cadmium orange is very powerful. I mix that with some red. Again here you notice we're using lots of paint. Not so much uh, water, but more paint to get our to get our beautiful colors here. And again, if don't be too don't be too um, focused on getting every detail of the flower. Try to get the overall feel of the flower, the shape of it. Okay, it's kind of like a um, you know, sort of like a. Uh, it kind of reminds me some of them like a pyramid, right? Like an upside down pyramid. So the kind of shape, but it's sort of like a uh, like a cone, almost like a cone. Like the top is round. And then it cones down. So try to try to focus on just the abstract idea of what you're seeing. And because when I, I know I struggled with the same thing too when I first started doing flowers years ago. I would get so consumed in trying to get every little detail of the flower. By the time I was done, there was tons of pencil marks everywhere and all that. Try to just get the overall idea. And then once you start painting, once you start painting, then you can paint in the details actually. So let's go with a yellow. So you can actually paint in the, the petals of the flower if you want as you go. So I'm using cadmium yellow. Now I'm going to go with a little bit of um, raw. Um, uh, uh, this would be um, yellow ochre to get a little bit of a change in the in the yellow, the gold color. A little more yellow. Again, I'm using lots of fresh paint, not too much water. And you can go in and get some shapes of the flower. If you have a little issue where paint starts to drip into the other area, no problem. Take a tissue, roll it up, make a little point with your tissue, and then just lift up the paint like that. That's all you have to do. Let that dry and then come back later and, and finish it. And that's it. Now let's go back. We'll get some more greens. Now I'm going to put in some greens here and there. 
I'll go with a smaller brush. I'll get a lot, um, some more olive green. Mix that with a little bit of cerulean blue. Uh, or actually some uh, French ultramarine blue. Again, if you have a little bit of issues with things bleeding, let it, sometimes it's okay. That's going to be all right. It's not too much. So you monitor what you see happening on your paper as you go. And there I'm just using some more uh, Opera Rose, Alizarin Crimson, Mineral Violet. If you have to, at this point, sometimes it's better off to maybe clean up the palette a little bit. I'm going to do that. Paper towel. Paper towel with a little bit of water. And just we'll make this a two-part series here looks like we're probably gonna have to do that so here it looks like we're pretty much got we have most of our flowers in I think that's good um, let's come back we'll finish up working on the vase and the uh, fruit and the teapot and tablecloth here and, and we'll have a nice uh, finished painting of flowers okay we'll be right back